I've came up with an acronym of what the 1% actually want. So it's called TMA, time, money, and attention. If you figure this out, you would actually make a lot of money. You connect the 30 people at a 90% level. Those 30 people also talk about your services as well at a very optimal level. So having a creative eye can open up a world of different possibilities. If you're in hospitality for a long period of time, you're not doing it for the money. You're actually doing it for the love of the people. Welcome back to the Beyond the Wealth podcast. I'm your host, Andres Sanchez, and today we have Bishop, the go-to person for A-listers wanting to come into Miami and live that upper echelon lifestyle. He has had an amazing background in hospitality, working with people like David Grutman, and now owns his own concierge business, and I am so excited to get to dive into this because being somebody that's homegrown from Miami, nightlife is everything down here. And this is one of the legends who has been crushing it in this industry. Brother, thank you for coming on the show. I appreciate you, sir. How are you? I am doing well, man. Just another day, another, another interview. Day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I want to make sure everybody gets to know you before we dive in. I know you. I got the chance to do research. But give the 30-second pitch on who Bishop is. Man, that's such a little question. Because um, I do have a lot of different aspects when it comes to me being Bishop. But um, yeah, so uh, full name is Marvel Bishop, but I go by as Bishop. Uh, I am a luxury concierge host here based in Miami. Uh, been in, I'm really from New York. I came here okay. in 2009, uh, went to FIU, pause up. I, pause we, we up, just, let's we go. Just, we just, uh, we just, I, just, I just realized that we <laughs> went to the same, uh, same school. Yep. And um, what a lot of people don't know before the hospitality realm, uh, I actually started out as a photographer and videographer in FIU. I did a bunch of frater- uh, shoots and you know a bunch of video shoots for fraternities, sororities, departments, Department of Health, uh, business, law, uh, CARTA, architect, and that's I was actually able to like really get my name known out there as far as like you know just doing like a lot of content for all these like departments and all these organizations. So I've been doing that for, from 2009, and then. Um, I, uh, what people want to know, you know, I am six foot 11, 330, <laughs> lost about 50 pounds, obviously, with the last year. And I did play basketball, played basketball in New York, and I played a little bit of semi pro, and I came here in 2009. So, um, I am a, uh, really, uh, a devoted person to me being a servant to the people as well. And how am I able to, like, honestly, you know, provide value to so many people, um, through my art and through my, uh, I guess my, my artistry and also my trade and also, uh, for what I do now, you know, that's, that's the, that's honestly the biggest purpose in my life. Amazing. And thanks for getting the six eleven thing out early. <laughs> yeah. I I, to. I'm not yeah. going to, I'm probably not the first person that I told us, but I think you are the biggest person I've ever actually You're met. You're definitely the, the, the third person this month that has told me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it's funny cause I was doing homework on you and like you could tell on Instagram, you're a big guy, mm-hmm. but I'm listening to one of your old podcasts while I'm doing some work. And I hear 6'11", 340. I was like, wait, what? Yeah. So I, I go back and I heard it and I'm like, this is the biggest person I've ever met. Yeah. This is the, oh, you not, that I, not that I wasn't excited, but yeah. I got more excited. I'm like, it's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, I had to I make sure that. I got the big chairs out. Thank you, man. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I love the, the hospitality, man. Because, you know, sometimes when I do these uh, interviews, man, I get either scrunched up in these little seats, you know. So I do appreciate the uh, <laughs> the lounge effect, honestly. Yeah, you know, for makes sure. It makes me feel at home. Yeah, 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 for sure. Hey, we try, at Beyond the Wealth, we try and treat our guests with the best service ever, which you would be uh, very understanding of. Absolutely. So you had the hospitality background, but let's start all the way early. Mm -hmm. You were creative, and you spoke about what you do now as an art. Where did the creativity come from? Was it something you think you were born with, or did you kind of just grow that? No, I just grew that, honestly. Uh, You know, I... One of my boys, my, one of my best friends, Tommy Cadet, he's actually a senior editor for Complex in New York. He actually gave me a very, very, uh, uh, in, uh, a big introduction uh, in uh, photography and video. And I saw him doing it and I just wanted to try it too. And I remember taking some pictures uh, when I was with my, uh, my stepfather at the time. And I was in the car and I was actually on the highway and I took some pictures through like, you know, uh, the windshield that it was cracked. And I took some pictures, put it on Facebook and then everybody loved it. Um, and, uh, after that, then I started to really take, you know, a lot more pictures for a whole bunch of different, you know, like I said, you know, uh, organizations, but it, it really put me in a space where it kind of led up to where I'm doing now because, uh, 
the person who actually gave me a job, which I haven't, I don't know if I've ever told this, this, I told the story, but I never really had a connection. So Jonathan Menico, um, he's a, he was a theater guy in, uh, in FIU and I needed a job, uh, cause I had my aunt cut me off. I had my, I made my aunt cut me off because I wanted to become a man and actually, you know, become like, you know, this person to basically be, you know, a fend for my own. But he knew me as a photographer and videographer as everybody did in FIU. Mm -hmm. So because of my creativity, who I was as far as doing photography video, it actually connected me into the hospitality realm. So um, I've never really told that, so that's actually pretty interesting. Very cool. And um, yeah, after that, he gave me a job at Story, uh, you know, Jay Pink and also Patrick Fleming. They were my uh, head of security and also assistant head of security at Story. And um, I worked there. And I would say that my creativity that I have really definitely assisted me in me doing security in story because it it made me think about my job a lot differently than any other job if that makes sense um just being able to see how i can be better how i can actually strive how i can actually like you know pr you know uh approach my job as security as story a lot differently than others and, um, you know, having a creative eye can definitely, you know, open up a world of different possibilities where, you know, you don't really look at the world just like everybody else. Like you look at it kind of like not necessarily like kind of like a like a, a like a canvas, but kind of like from like a 360 sphere approach, if that makes sense. Yeah. And um, yeah, it definitely helped me out tremendously on uh finding out different ways to connect to people while I was taking care of them, while I was securing them as well too. Um, my thirst for creativity has also propelled me onto learning more about the trade and also the craft of hospitality as well. Because, you know, security work, so first of all, working for David Gruntman, shout out to my man. Um, he is the reason why I'm here today, honestly, and I, I think, I think my lucky stars, honestly, for honestly working with him and working for him, I should say, um, I owe my life to him. You know, he always said to always worry about the details, you know, and not just worrying about, not just worrying about security, but like when you were actually working at like one of the, the biggest clubs in the world, you can't just worry about like your job description. You have to worry about everything else in between as well, too. So I do believe that working for him and also having a background in creativity has kind of propelled me into having that, like, you know, very, very unique approach to my job. Yeah, you've kind of taken those two experiences, or not experiences, taken those two situations mm -hmm. and molded yourself into yes, the perfect kind of person for what you do now. Yeah. And I've lived in Miami my whole life. I love Komodo, Swan, like mm -hmm. these Grutman experiences, I'll call them, because they're not your typical restaurants. I've seen him multiple times, and the way that he handles himself in these restaurants, the way the staff responds to him mm -hmm. being around shows that he runs a very tight ship because he demands an, a very unique experience. Yeah. And I think you got to see that firsthand. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, listen, like, Watching him work, you know, and obviously, you know, like he is, you know, honestly, like the pioneer when it comes to Miami, you know, hospitality and restaurateurship and everything else. So if that's a word, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it doesn't matter if he started from square one from day one up until where he's at right now. I think almost 10 plus years. Uh, he will know if there is a light that's actually like off a little bit from like the way in the ceiling at, at live. Like he is so meticulous when it comes to like him knowing where everything is and where everybody needs to be. He's always two, three, four steps ahead of everybody. And one of the things I've actually learned about him as well too, while working for him is that, you know, him dealing with these type of like high, you know, A-lister, you know, celebrities, He's always said, you know, you always got to provide value. You always, you always have to um, expect nothing in return as well, too. Um, and just literally, you know, it's like Will Gardera, which is uh, uh, another big um, hospitality legend, you know, which him and Grutman definitely align. You know, it's all about unreasonable hospitality. You know, giving so much to the point where they will always come back no matter what, no matter if it's, if there's a if there's a dollar sign attached to it or not, you know. So um, 
And that's one of the things, too, about hospitality that people need to realize is that if you're in hospitality for a long period of time, you're not doing it for the money. Like, you're actually doing it for the love of the people and the love of really catering and being able to serve people as well. Because uh, no matter what you do, it doesn't matter how much money you make, if you do hospitality the right way, the amount of money that you make is not going to be the equal amount of money that you ha- that you'll get when like when you're serving people that makes sense yeah like you serving people is always going to be the coup de gras and always going to be above as far as like from a number of value if that makes sense yeah and that's how it's supposed to be you know because that's one of the ways it's not necessarily just about being better it's about being different and when did you identify that that was something that got you excited got you motivated (sighs) man so i'm gonna go back a little bit I've always been a person growing up where I just always love to take care of people. I've always loved to protect people. I've always loved to just cater to them, you know? So, um, and playing sports also too, it's kind of like a a little bit of a, a way of also protection, especially when it comes to certain sports like basketball a little bit, but also football. Cause I played, I played linemen, you know, but I only played high school football. But um, just being able to be in a position to be in a position of authority, but not in a sense where it's like a dictatorship standpoint, but it's like it's not coming from a place of corruption, but it's coming from a place of competence. Does that make sense? Yep, yep. And me doing that and me being able to have that privilege to be able to take care of people, honestly, um, from back then... And doing it now, I think, not I think, I know and I believe that I have been like ordained to be this person of service to people. Uh, You play chess, right? Yeah. So what's interesting, what's very, very interesting is that, you know, my last name is actually Bishop. Mm -hmm. But if you, if people, if you play chess, chess is one of the most, the bishop in chess is one of the most important pieces in chess. It, it protects and serves and caters to the needs and wants and desires of the king and queen. The king and queen are my clients. So when I, and here's the thing too, when I came up with my concierge company, well, I came up with my, my, uh, my security company first and then also my protection company and then also my, secure, my luxury concierge, it's, it's always been Bishop because of my last name. It wasn't because I kind of put two and together and yeah. was like, yo, like, like that's some freaky shit. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if I can curse. My bad. No, but, you're good. You're good. Yeah, it's some freaky. It's a freaky shit. Like, it really is crazy because it's like that's how I know I've been ordained. And honestly, I've been really, really like destined to do what I do because it's 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 just really mind boggling, honestly. Because it's like, wow, like before you even know it, your last name is literally what you are doing and you have no idea just yet so when i came up with the name bishop executive services for my concierge company that's when like i finally put the bishop whatever and i was like oh my god this is nuts like it's like your true calling yeah yeah definitely um and even what's even more crazy is that my last name Bishop is actually it's not my father's name. It's my mother's maiden name. So had like my parents would have been married, <laughs> I would have been Rodriguez because my father uh he's from um St. Thomas his grand his parents are from Dominican Republic. So uh yeah, it's just it's just you know things happen the way it's supposed to. Yep. Uh and you know when I put two and two together, I was like, okay, you know, my last name is Bishop. This is what I'm doing. This is literally what it is as far as like my whole entire brand and scheme is literally just falling into my lap. You know, this is what I'm meant to be. I'm a firm believer and I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that was a lot. And like in a good way, mm. I'm a firm believer in everything happens for a reason. Yeah. I, I, I don't think that things just happen by chance. Um, I think you put yourself in situations and you receive what you put out. And I think for you, 
you were kind of chipping away at finding what that calling was for you and you were always around it. You were around the areas of business that now you know are built for you and, and what make you happy. You were just on that path. Mm-hmm. And when it was your time to put it all together, it came together. Mm-hmm. Now, fast forward, you've built a very successful concierge business Thank all you. around this true calling, which yeah. is amazing. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's amazing. And what was kind of that like transition you from you had the security company you had the the protection company now you've gone all in on this concierge business what was that kind of turning point 2000 and i think 16 or 17 i was bodyguarding one of my clients and he uh for Miami, I haven't, haven't seen him in a long time, but I was uh, at a dinner party with him and I was guarding him and we were talking and he was like, hey man, you know, like, yeah, you know, you're a big guy. You're, you know, really large stature and I love <laughs> like, you know, what you do. But one of the things that you need to realize is, is that not only because your size and not because of your presence, but you have this vernacular about you and you have this this way of speaking to people that peop- that you really touch people and people mag- magnetize towards you. Have you ever even thought about maybe even expanding the company into a concierge? And I'm like, what the hell is that? <laughs> and I was like, concierge? Like, what do you mean? It's like, no, like, you know, not only with the private security, but you do the transportation, you do the VIP logistics, you do everything, and you come up, you you come across as this, you know, entity where people come to Miami and anything that they need, you take care of them on a high end, very, very luxurious level. And I was like, all right, well, that sounds good. And uh, I did some research. And then that was when, you know, because my, my, my security company at the time was called Bishop Protective Services. So when I was like, okay, well, now I got to go back to the drawing board when it comes <laughs> to like, you know, making this, making this, uh, this scheme up or making this business up right now, right? So, um, and I was, yeah, I was, I was just trying to, trying to figure it out. I was like, okay, like Bishop, Bishop is definitely going to be the, the, the first, the first acronym. Great. Okay. Now what is like the top level? What is the, the coup de gras, right? I was like, okay, well I can't use optimal because optimal doesn't really go good. Like, like Bishop optimal services, that doesn't work. And then. I came it up. I came up with it as like executive, like everything executive, everything top notch, everything just at like you know the top 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 level. So uh, after that, yeah. So I came it up. I came up with it. it. Was it was Bishop Executive Services, and then one of my guys, Ace Cecily, shout out to him. He's my big bro. Um, he's really heavy into marketing and also into branding as well. So he was the one that came up with my logo and everything else too. Um, so he really, really helped me out, you know, thank God for him. He was like, yo, like, why don't you just come up with the acronym, you know, only the best. And I was like, wait a minute, only the best. I was like, yeah, only the best B E S Bishop executive services to take off the T it would be best genius. genius. <laughs> I was like, what? So, um, yeah. So, you know, that's, that's the tagline. Um, only the best. And yeah, that's, that's honestly how I came up with it. And it's been honestly off and running ever, ever since. So how many years has it been since the concierge business was born? So I would say it's going to be, so I've been, I've been in nightlife for what? House, I've been in nightlife and hospitality for about, it's about to be 12, 13 years. So the inception of BES was, I believe, 2015 or 16. So yeah, so about eight, it's been eight, around nine, the block. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's nine years. It's definitely, it's definitely nine years. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. something we haven't touched on yeah, <laughs> for the 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 people behind the camera that may just not know what is a concierge business like when we talk about this. Yeah, what are you offering? So it's it's that's actually a really good question because a lot of people don't really understand. I try to put my description of what I do for a living in my Instagram bio. And people still don't fucking get it. <laughs> so this is what it is, okay? So literally, a concierge is a liaison. 
is a middleman of honestly any type of service of a high end level that what clients want. So in my particular field, concierge is uh, so I basically provide experiences for the one percent. So if you're not the one percent, we make you feel like the one percent. So anything when it comes to just making sure that you have the highest level of experience possible. Transportation, villas, mansions, private security, exotic cars, uh, very, very exclusive uh, uh, sporting events, entertainment events, uh, reservations. I think I said reservations already. Restaurants, you know, there's a lot of hard to get into places, uh, especially restaurants that a lot of people don't even know of or they know of but they don't know how to get into. You know, like I'll give you an example, like Carbone. Carbone yeah. is, is... Carbone's uh, a pain in the ass. Pain in the ass, you <laughs> yeah. know? Um, not for me, but it's, yeah. it's a pain. It, it definitely is a pain, like, you know, as opposed to you, I can get your reservation within two to three days. At times, it will take probably two or three months for you to actually plan it out. That's factual for anybody that's not from Miami. Yeah, yeah. And then other other things, too, like Faina, living room, you know, uh, just these type of exclusive places... Uh, that people don't necessarily know about, if that makes sense. And also, you know, with my company, it's, you know, you can even get like a good experience or a great experience, honestly, because of, you know, my connections and my access and also my re- my business relationships with these uh, these businesses. You know, like just like a regular, you know, place like Komodo. Mm-hmm. I've always said it's a difference. There is a regular reservation and there is a bishop reservation. Regular reservation, it won't be hard for you to get into Komodo at all. You can literally call and get it. But if you have our company calls, it's just attention to detail. It's just, you know, uh, just the just the, the certain touch that you'll get as far as, like, you know, being able to be seated right away, being able to actually be called by your first name, and also they know that you are a bishop client, and they'll treat you differently or highly because of me bringing that business for them. So, um... And that's honestly across the board. So two questions. Yes, sir. One, what's the hardest reservation in Miami right now? <sighs> what's the hardest? Man, honestly, it's not Carbone. No. No. Uh, I would say the hardest reservation is ZZ's. ZZ's. Yeah. Yep. Um. Yeah, I would. It's it's if you don't have a membership. Good luck. It's not happening. I'm telling you right now. You gotta know the right people. I e me, but uh, other than that, it can be and also too. I would say Rails. Rails. Rails, the new Italian spot that's open up in South Beach. They uh-huh. had it in uh, in New York. Yep. Um, that's a pain in the butt. I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah, ZZ's is funny. They like two years ago, I think it was. They asked all the Heat players what their favorite restaurant in Miami was. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, was, they did 11 players. I'm going to throw that number out there. I think like eight or nine said ZZ's. So ZZ's is probably like one of the, the, has like one of the best foods. Like their dining is exquisite. All right. Well, I got to, I got to get a Bishop reservation. Yes, sir. <laughs> Second question is, yeah. so like, because we do have a lot of people from Miami listening. Mm-hmm. I want, let's say I want to go to Komodo. Mm-hmm. I call you. How do you make money off of me asking for you to make the reservation? Like, am I paying you for the reservation? So, so, so it's, it's, so that, see, now here is like, not the, not the annoying part about my job, but there's always a case of paying it forward and just doing what you need to do to serve the clients, uh, to, to benefit in the future, if that makes sense. So what we, so how I, okay, I'll, I'll tell you exactly how I get paid. It's yeah. very simple. Front end and back end. So if there's certain reservations that I know that it's very, very hard for me, for you to get, and it actually takes work for me to do it, there will be a fee for that. We also do memberships as well too. Um, but I'll be very honest. There's also times where like, you know, if I know for sure that I'm just, more focused on building the relationship and just doing that favor for you, I'm not going to, like, if I don't need to, I'm not going to charge you necessarily just for that. Now, here's another thing. If that's just one option, that makes sense. 
Good thing is there's some people here who are actually really good hearted and they'll just tip you for like handling. Because at the end of the day, it's like, it's all about like, you know, like just doing the job so they won't necessarily have to do it and worry about it. And at times, they'll just tip you, honestly. Um, so another way I, I get paid is, or my company, I should say, we get paid is um, we have like different levels of services. So like we'll have like a first tier, uh, which is a VIP, like remote access. So you pay a certain amount and then we'll handle all the logistics. And then the second tier would be more so of like uh, other services like transportation, private security, uh, chefs, um, literally yachts, whatever it is. And uh, the third level is going to be like 24-7 VIP concierge service where it's like you have me and my team at your beck and call. If we have a client that hits us up at Thursday or Friday in the morning at 3 a.m. to get us a freaking carton of milk, we're going to have to get that carton of milk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? So, um, yeah. And, and you know, it's, it's uh, like everything is a journey. When it comes to entrepreneurship and business, but especially when it comes to concierge slash like hospitality, you gotta play the long game. You gotta play the long game because if you don't, you're just going to. You'll probably, you know, if you want to charge maybe two, three, four, five hundred dollars just for something that you're probably not charged for, you could probably get that money, but you'll definitely lose that client. Yep, I'll tell you that. You know, um, you can't necessarily go for the home runs all the time sometimes you gotta like you know do do a what is it uh is it butt like like the oh uh, bunt yeah, yeah, yeah yeah sometimes you gotta do a bunt. move so the runner you, over you gotta move runner over so you can get the first base and the second base and the third and the home you can't go for grand slams all the time yep. when it comes to this you know and also too that's another thing like a lot of these like high-end wealthy you know i don't know if i'm jumping the gun a little bit but a lot of these like help like wealthy high-end clients they will know if you're just out here just trying to go for a grand slam. Yep. If you're just over here just, just trying to just get a buck and trying to nickel and dime, you know, because the people with a lot of money, they have it for a reason. <laughs> yeah, yes, they do. <laughs> you know, so. And they're, it's, it's funny, like, sometimes they're the most frugal people. Mm-hmm. They're always willing to pay for good service mm-hmm. and pay for convenience. Mm-hmm. But if they sniff or sense that there's any bit of greed, yeah. they're usually the quickest to be like, yeah. no, I'm good. I don't yeah. need, I don't, Fact. because... Let's be honest, like a concierge service isn't a need, it's a nice to have. And for yes. your clients yeah. at that level, yeah, it becomes a need when the service is so good because mm-hmm. you can't go back from that. Mm-hmm. You're like, now it's like, oh, well. It's not, so I've always said that my concierge company is not a necessity, but I'm actually changing my thought process. Okay. It's not an initial necessity. It becomes one. It becomes one once you, once you get it. Yep. You know, um, kind of going back to private security, Private security is actually really is really dope and it's actually very very particular because you feel like you don't need it until you get it and then when you get it you want it oh you want it all the time. Yep. It's the same thing with concierge. It's like okay now nah, I can probably do this by myself. Okay I can do that. But then when you actually have somebody of expertise to actually handle those things for you, okay I can just pay ten fifteen twenty k whatever just for everything to be handled and I don't have to think about it. You know like I've I've came up with an acronym. Uh, recently onto why onto like an acronym of like what clients and what the 1% actually want so it's called TMA so it's called time money and attention if you figure this out I guarantee you you would not be poor you would actually make a lot of money when it comes to dealing with the 1% the 1% they care about time they care about money and they care about attention now let's Revert that into parallel of my company. Time. People literally pay me to save time. Yep. Logistics, transportation, they just pay me a certain amount so I can literally do all the heavy lifting and you don't have to actually focus and actually take their own time for them to do the task, if that makes sense. Uh, Money. Money is... So in the money standpoint, they want to make sure that they don't get gouged, they don't get taken advantage of. They are they know they're paying pre- premium when it comes to this type of service, you know. Um, especially when it comes to solving bigger problems, 
but they don't mind spending the money if this money is being spent right. Mm-hmm. So if you worry about that, then cool. So you got time and then money. The last one, which is one of the biggest, I think, is attention. Attention to detail, attention to the little things of, you know, what they want and what they desire. Um, so, for instance, if there's a client that is that loves red Skittles, I'll get them an all red Skittle bag for them at their stay. That's attention. But then also on top of that, the other way of attention is really making them feel really great about, you know, with when they experience you know, these, uh, these experiences, you know, when they, when they, when they experience it. So, you know, if you actually have those three, then you'll definitely go a long way. And that's actually applicable to any type of business. Honestly, it's not just like concierge. It's honestly anything. Yeah. It kind of boils down to like that right there is what everybody cares about. Like no one wants to waste time. Mm -hmm. But wasting time is like the worst thing you could ever do. You can't get it back. You can't get get time back. Yeah. No one wants to spend unnecessary amounts of money. They want their money to go to good things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And everybody, who doesn't love attention? Like, I mean, there's those outliers that want to be solo. But who doesn't love attention in a good way? Like, people that are going out of their way to ensure that you're feeling good. That's like sales. Like, Mm -hmm. exactly what you would want to do to a client or a prospect. So it's very, what you just shared is very applicable to anybody listening who has an agency, who runs a company, who wants to be an entrepreneurship. Maybe you work in corporate America, but you do sales. Mm -hmm. Take what he just said and use that framework and you will start to see that the people on the other side are going to respect you more, are going to give you more attention, give you more credibility because you're servicing what they care about. Yes, sir. You work with all of these high net worth individuals. It would behoove me not to ask. (laughs) What are some of the one most annoying things that they ask you which could be a that, that's a can of worms but two and and maybe we don't even have to really get deep into one the one i really want to know about is like what is different about the one percent when you see like because i'm sure you work with people that are a one-time client it's like they, they want it it's cool great what about those people who have made it and are constantly using the service living that good life what difference do you see in them so I'm going to answer the second one first because um, I, I can go crazy with a whole bunch of annoyances or whatever, <laughs> like honestly. Um, so what's the biggest difference with the 1% like yeah. as far as I deal with them? Their tenacity of never hearing no. Hmm. Interesting. Like I've always said within my line of work, it's never no. It's always, let me see what I can do for you. When it comes to these type of people, money is not an option. They will spend the money, but they don't want to hear anything that, that they don't necessarily want to hear, yeah. if that makes sense. If I'm a billionaire and I have all this money, the last thing I want to hear, if I want something, I'm going to go and get it. I'm going to get it, and I want you to go get it for me. So why the hell am I hearing no? Figure it out. So it's, you know, if I don't have the answer, somebody else on my team or somebody else within my network will have the answer and we'll be able to figure it out for them. So I think that's definitely the number one thing. It's, 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 def- it's, de- it's definitely that. Um, kind of go back into the acronym that I said. I think the biggest thing is time. Like, they don't necessarily waste time. And they are, a lot of them, I should say, are masters of delegation. And delegation is hard. And delegation is one of the hardest things ever because it's always about being able to put trust into somebody else to actually get the task done. Yeah. Um, yeah, delegation is definitely very, very important. I, 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 would, I would definitely say that. Um, also, too, it's, it's, definitely, it's definitely very important to, to try to serve these people right, I should say, is at times it's not really about building the relationships with the client in specific, but also either their sub-clients or even their assistant or maybe even their secretary. 
what a lot of people within this industry, they get so butthurt, is that they want to build the relationships with the client. They want to be able close. To, they want to be able close to them. Listen, I have a lot of clients who are like, I, I'm gonna go to their weddings. I'm gonna go to their funerals. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I'm yeah. very very close to them. You know, like I, I I'm actually very close with uh, one of the founders of like one of the more most successful VC companies in the world. I can go to his house whenever. Can't name his name, but you know yeah. I can tell you later. Um, but with that, it's not about them. It's about, it's never ever about the client. Like, let me just say this. It is about the client. It is. But as far as like getting the task done, at times, it's not necessarily just about building a relationship with the client, but building a relationship with the person that's closest to the client. Mm -hmm. And if you build a relationship with the secretary and, and slash the, the assistant, you get everything you want. Well, they're the ones that run the show. They, they, they are actually the bosses. They get paid to... They are literally the bosses. <laughs> yep. Seriously. Yeah. yeah I know? mean, well, well, it goes back to what we just talked about. Like, these elite people, the one thing when they make their money that they do everything in their power mm -hmm. is to get more time back. Mm -hmm. So the assistant, the secretary, quickly becomes the CEO of their life. Yes. And that person, especially to you in your business, is probably more valuable than mm -hmm. the actual client mm -hmm. themselves mm -hmm. because that person knows what they want, when they want it, how they want it, and is actually paid to communicate with you. Yeah. So it's important, and I like that you highlight, like, that's an important relationship. Here's another little nugget as well, too. You get closer with the secretary slash the assistants in order to be able to empower them and to amplify whatever they got going on not to try to replace them. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that we do as far as like me being a host is definitely like, you know, assistant work yeah. at times, managing work or whatever. Um, I'm not here to replace anybody. I'm here, to, I'm here for amplification. I'm here, I'm here to amplify the situation. I'm here to make sure that the client is taken care of and me being an ultimate support for them. So how you do that is you get in bed and you also get very close with the assistant. Mm. And you make it very clear to them and you tell them, I am here of full support for you. I'm not here to replace anybody. I'm not trying to like, you know, one up anybody or trying to get them, trying to get the client to like, like me more and all that stuff. No, no, no. I understand what your job is, but I just want to make sure that I make your life easier. And whenever you make a assistant's life easier, you're winning. It's, it's off to the races, man. <laughs> I love. I mean, look, that's that's invaluable advice yeah. to the people listening who might be wanting to go the hospitality route or trying to get into what you're doing. And I appreciate you sharing because mm -hmm. it's all about giving out free game on this podcast. All We're day. here. It's free. Well, I like to say it's not free. You pay me by subscribing. But <laughs> we, uh, I, and and the guest that's always here is trying to give you all as much value as possible. And something like that is invaluable. So again, I appreciate you sharing that. I don't want to go too deep into that other question because that's just a can of worms. I want to move the conversation forward okay, and cool. talk about, you, you've mentioned you're the king of networking. Networking is a massive part of your business. We live in what I would call the networking epicenter here in Miami, South yeah, Florida. Yeah, well said, well said, yeah, <laughs> yeah facts. What have you learned about networking? What makes you different in that field? Let's, let's, let's dive into that. So what makes me different is I am a person who does not romanticize connections. I've always been saying that, and that's kind of like my little thing that I say. Um, I do not romanticize relationships. If there is a person that wants to connect with me and I want to connect with them, and there is just a stance of not necessarily just trying to... Cause everybody here is just so fake. It's like, yo, I want to build a relationship. I want to get to know you. Sometimes you just want to just take the girl to the bed. Sometimes the girl just wants you. All right, yo, you got what I want. I got what you need. Yo, let's run it. It's the same thing in business. The same thing in networking, you know. Um, the difference with me is, is that I don't mind that as long as I know what I'm getting myself into. If I know for sure that all you care about is getting what you want and you're going to get me what I want as well too, but I know that for sure as far as like full transparency, then I know how to put you, I know what box to put you in. Yep. You know? Um, there's not a lot of clarity. There's not a lot of clear communication and transparency when it comes to trying to do the, when it, when it, when it comes to, you know, uh, uh, networking, if that makes sense. 
you know, um, I'm always about trying to build a relationship first if I can. But if I know where this is actually going, then I know how to treat you. I know how to handle you. I know where box to put you. And then I can definitely move forward. And you mentioned that. How many boxes do you have? Like, <laughs> is it kind of A box, B box? I, I really only have two boxes, honestly. I have a, a one box where, okay, this is the person that I actually want to build this relationship with because we're going to really do some dope shit together and it's going to take time. It's not really necessarily about the money. We are going to get money, but you know it, we're going to definitely build that and see where that goes. And this is the second box of what I just said. It was just basically the, the transparent, the transparent uh, transactional box. So um, yeah, it's just honestly those two boxes. And also too, I would say, well, the qu- the question was like you know like like how how do you network? Or like, what? Yeah, like just well, you it was great start there with like yeah. what makes you different, but uh-huh. also like networking at its core, yeah. like. What are things people listening? Because our audience is majority twenty to twenty-five yeah. year olds, hustling, trying to get into entrepreneurship. Yeah. What skills can they take to networking? I mean, you touched on some. Okay, how can yeah. they get better? Yeah. So how you can get better is actually sets. You need you need to have systems. You need to have a system where you know exactly how to, I guess, massage and, and, and massage and, and handle each and every contact. You need to have a before, a during, an after approach when it comes to networking. So you go to a networking event, right? Before you even go, you have to realize why are you going to that networking event? What is your purpose? What value are you actually bringing to the equation at this networking event? What can you do for other people? What kind of people are actually going to be at this event? All that research you have to do prior to know where you are going to go. Because if you don't have a plan, you're going to plan to fail at the end of the day. It's, it's, so, it's so cliche, but it's so true. Yeah. During the event, right? So many people just bounce around like damn bees trying to meet everybody. Me, personally, I just breathe and I just let it come to me. Now, how you do that as far as letting things come to you and see how you can navigate is that you need to really understand what your superpower is. I have a couple of superpowers. <laughs> so me being 6'11", me being in a, a stature and also not only being able to be so large, larger than life, you know, um, but also being able to have, you know, uh, a level of, 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 of a vernacular to, to talk to people. That is like, and also people like to connect to me and they like to just get to know me and, you know, the gravity towards me, that is my superpower. So that right there, I know how to move in a room full of vultures, if that makes sense. <laughs> There's times when I go to a networking event, you know, I'll go and meet a lot of people. But then also there's times where I'm like, I just stand there or just sit there and I just let, it, let them come to me. Get a drink, chill, and then people just want to just come to me. Hey, how you doing? You know, okay, your name is Bishop. Oh, very nice to meet you. I've seen you on Instagram. I've seen you on YouTube. Love your podcast. Love what you do with your concierge. Sometimes you got to just let shit come to you. Yep. Here's another thing as well. If there is, and this is, this is, this is, I, I can't even, I can't even take this credit. I have to like really take, I have to give this to Alex, Alex Hermosi. Once he told me this, I was like, wow, this is crazy. If there is a person at a networking event or somebody that you really, really want to connect with, especially if you know they're going to be there, for God's sake, do not go there and, t- and meet this guy or this lady and be like, hey, how can I provide value to you? It's the worst thing you can do because that question is they they hear that all the time Mm -hmm. from these people. Why don't you, like I said, doing the research before the networking events? You know, let's say hypothetically, Alex Ramosi, you know he's going to be there. Do the research on what you can do. uh, Do the research on him to see how you can provide value to him. See what he needs. There, it could be so little, it could be so grand, whatever it is, but like just doing that research and just doing the, and, and uh, taking the initiative to like get that step forward and be two, three steps ahead of him and actually presenting something to him, you're going to stand out. Everything you're saying really aligns with my thoughts mm-hmm. in this because I always tell people like, because you can get kind of caught in that like obsession of like networking, meeting people mm-hmm. constantly. Mm-hmm. I'm a firm believer in networking with intention. Mm-hmm. Not, it doesn't serve you to know 30,000 people. No. If you know them <laughs> at a one out of 10 level, 
you're better off knowing 30 people at a 9 out of 10 and letting that network organically grow. Mm -hmm. But you can only do that if you're going in intentional, like you said, prepping, preparing, understanding why you're there, who you want to connect with. And I think people need to hear that more and more often because we live in this hyper-communicative society where you're connecting with people on Twitter, you're connecting with people on Instagram, you're connecting with people in person. You lose a little bit of that intention, that yeah. like who you want to connect with. But doing the things that you mentioned, flesh that out because you're going there prepped, prepared. You're not just going in like, okay, I'm just going to talk to everybody. It, it, it's, it's, it's always about quality over quantity yep. when it comes to meeting people. It's not necessarily just about meeting people. It's also about making sure how you make people feel when you meet them and how you listen to them, how you can actually tell them all the information that they actually gave you so you can actually teach them a little bit. You can actually, you actually know exactly what you have learned from them so they know that they hadn't, haven't been just talking to a dead wall, if that makes yeah. sense. You know? that's, so, yeah, that's so important. Because once I'm, I'm like, oh wow, okay, this guy knows that I do this. This guy knows. This guy knows I do this and I do that. Oh wow, this guy also kind of taught me back about my concierge hmm. company. So, you know, I'm not gonna have to like have another meeting where I have to tell him again about what I do. So, if you're able to like really nourish and also like you know build that relationship, that can actually get to a certain level where they can actually be your chi leader. If that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. Um kind of goes back into trying to connect to 30,000 people at a 10% level versus trying to connect to 30 people at a 90% level. You connect to 30 people at a 90% level, those 30 people are going to be, especially if you actually really treat them right and you tell them what you do, but then also you give them value as well and it's, it's an even exchange, they, they want to be able to like really talk and be able to like really champion and also talk about your services as well at a very optimal level. So, um, yeah, like just being able to do that with those 30 people, like, yo, Bishop, this guy is amazing. He's a concierge host, but he's such a good person as well, too. You know what? I'm going to introduce him to somebody that I think that can be a client of his. Like you have a way more better chance of that actually happening with 30 people versus 30,000. 100%. You know, so, um, and then, oh, and the last thing too, because I don't want to forget this, is the after the event. So after, you took it out of my head. I was about bro, to Bro, the after the event, man, I think it's the most, I think it's the most important thing because you can do all that preparation, you can do all that work in the beginning, but if you don't do anything with it afterwards, and you don't know how to actually do it, you're in no man's land. Yep. Yep. So many people get it so messed up as far as like having all these crazy long meetings with these people that you just met. <laughs> Bro, you don't need to do that. It's very simple. I have two different levels of, so like I said, the, the, I have two boxes, right? Yep. If it's just a uh, person who I know for sure that I want to connect with, but I don't want to have a half an hour conversation with them, mm -hmm. Six minute, six to seven minute discovery call. Easy. Very, very simple. I can literally have 10, 15 meetings, give or take, within an hour, hour and 15 minutes of those discovery calls versus like always like, oh, you know what, let's have a 30 minute call. <laughs> Why are you having 30 minute calls? For what? I There's no meetings. reason. I hate meetings. So. There's no reason. <laughs> but, the re but you know why the, people reason, the reason why people hate meetings? Because you are literally taking so much time yep. for no freaking reason, bro. Yep. yep. And, and guess what? I learned that from Gary Vee. Gary Vee taught me that. Gary Vee taught me, like, yo, you don't need to have these crazy 15, 20, 30 minutes. Like, he has, he has literally four or five minute meetings. Yeah, as long as you're quick One, to the One, two, point. three, four, five. Done. You know? Yep. So... <laughs> Bro, like, and you get so much done, you just need to be very, very on top of things when you have those type of, like, curated and very, very intact and very, very intentional type of meetings. Yep. And, and I, I've mentioned this before on this podcast. I say it all the time. The bar is so low. Mm -hmm. If you follow up, just a written follow up with anybody you connected at an event or online, you are already putting yourself ahead of nine of the 10 people that yeah. met them as well because they won't do it. The bar is low. You just need to do it. 
and we, you went deeper on like the meeting follow up. Yeah. I tell people just DM them. Great meeting you today. Pleasure. Can't wait to connect further. Anything like that, and then you go ahead and move the meeting my, forward. My, my my circle back. Listen, my circle back slash. I hate to say follow up, but let's just say for <laughs> lack of uh, words, follow up. My follow up game is ridiculous. <laughs> like, you literally have to tell me, go screw yourself <laughs> if you don't want me to contact you again. Like, you have to literally tell me that. Yeah. Yo, go screw yourself, Bishop. If I don't hear that, I'm, I'm still going. Because, you know, uh, just having that level of focus and to have that level of, like, persistence with anything, I've, I've had big, big clients that and it's a game at the end of the day. It's a game of entrepreneurship. It's just a game of business. You yeah. know, the, the follow up and the circle back. That's what it is. Like I think it's it's like if you're able to follow back up with somebody, I think either third or fourth time, like you have like a eighty two percent chance of actually closing the deal. Like it's not the first, it's not the second. It's actually third and fourth follow up that you know that you can definitely get the job done. Um, but yeah, no, I I I do that all the time. That's honestly like what I do. Like like within my concierge this is all about just following up and honestly nursing relationships that's it i mean we've we've gone deep here we've <laughs> talked about your journey we've talked about your kind of evolution into this concierge business what it takes to run it what it looks like from the inside talked about one of your gifts maybe your 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 best gift of networking and understanding people one thing that I always like to ask towards the tail end of interviews is where do you see yourself in 10 years? So I see myself in 10 years fully diverged into uh, merchant acquisitions. Okay. That's the one of the one of the goals that which I'm actually kind of low key doing now. Um, so we have a corporate network within our concierge where we just love to connect people who either have ideas like startups and then I have the network as well too. Like I have a three trillion dollar network. So it's like, I got to do something with that. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, um, but with that being said, it's, it's, I do that. And then like, you know, I have so many people that hit me up like, Hey, I have this idea. And also I have, you know, the access to like, you know, the network as well, put them together. If we make a deal, we make a deal. I get deals and like, like decks, I get like three or four as on five a week. Wow. People just hit me up. That's an interesting part of the... It's that. another level of the yeah. concierge, which, like I said, there's so much nuance when it comes to the concierge. You know, it's like, you know, we don't necessarily just worry about the experience as far as like turning up and, and all that and having a good time, but also upgrading people's quality of life. So the upgrading of people's quality of life is actually the corporate network and the merge acquisition side. So, um, and it's... I also want to say this, and I actually really love like your name of your podcast. I think Beyond the Wealth, right? The Beyond yep. the Wealth podcast. If there is someone that's actually watching this right now that is maybe not necessarily like wealthy or rich, or maybe they are like struggling, whatever. You know, it's it's always about having that next conversation. Like, you know, you're one conversation away from changing your life. Like, yep. you know, shout out to Melissa Wagi from uh, Epic Talk. She's always she always says that. And I may not be the wealthiest person. You know, I'm going to be wealthy. It's going to happen. I am going to be a billionaire. But as of right now, the next level for me to be able to actually connect that, like, if I'm if I don't have the wealth. If I personally do not have the wealth, there's somebody within my network that actually has that wealth that I'm able to actually connect and also, you know, be able to, you know, make deals as well. So um, I say that to say that, you know, you're a lot closer than what you that you actually think. Yep. You know, um, I am working on a deal right now where if this thing goes probably looking at about maybe like six or seven figure six or seven figure deal honestly hell yeah that's and, huge you know which i'll tell you exactly what it is offline but you know it, it's it's 
if you do not know, let me rephrase that. If, if you're trying to make it in Miami, there is just a couple, there's like honestly one or two other ways you can definitely do it. And one of the ways is definitely hospitality. You have to get closest to the sun when it comes to really, really dealing and also connecting with wealthy people. You have to find out where these people are. The restaurants, the, the, the hotel, like hotel lounges? Bro, yeah. listen, cheat code. I'll give you a code right, I'll give you a cheat code right now. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, maybe even, maybe every day, but I would say particularly then, one hotel, South Beach, between like four to like nine slash ten, just chill in the hotel lobby. Just go there. Free game for anybody that's listening Like literally just go there. Prop up, have your laptop, go to the bar, socialize. There are literally people that have what you want, but you have to put yourself in position for you to get that. I love it. Hotel lounges. Uh, 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 these high-end restaurant bars as well too. Just go to the bar, bro. Just go to the bar. You don't even have to drink either, by the way. You don't have to do that. Just like what I do is, I go there. Let's say if I go to Komodo, if I go to Gecko, right? Very simple. I tip the uh, the bartender maybe five or ten bucks, and um, if I know for sure that I don't want to drink, because that's another thing too. Like you know, for you to be successful within this concierge realm, don't drink. <laughs> like that's kind of like a crazy thing to say, but I've always said like that's actually one of my reels that like kind of went viral i think so uh, don't drink like try not to drink as much as possible because you gotta stay focused bro you can literally get a a um a uh, like a whiskey glass uh, like you know some type of orange peel mm-hmm. you know some type of soda water splash of cranberry looks like a drink yeah and just sip on it and literally just stay there and just watch people come in and out and then definitely people watch, and then that's when you'll be able to like really see if you want to connect to somebody. You can go there. Um, another place you can go to, um, Faina. Faina is another place where like you can just go to the the, uh, the restaurant bars. Maybe not even like a living room because depending on the situation, you may or may not be able to get in. Um, but you know, go to the restaurant bars. Very simple. You can go there. And the last one, which is actually the hugest cheat code, I think, is. Um, Oh my god, not Sawgrass Mall. Uh Battle Harbor? Thank you. Yeah, right down the block. That's my that's my backyard. I love that place. You already know what time it is. Dude, it's funny. <laughs> it's funny you say that. Like, like, like my go-to restaurant, my fiance and I live and die by Makoto. Mm-hmm. Like we will go yeah. there minimum once a month. Yeah. And I, we love to go sit at that bar up there. The type of cars and type of vehicles that you literally see in like that, like it's oh, dude, it, it's, it's, it's 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 it's, it's unreal. Sickening. It's unreal. Like I, I'm sitting at the bar there. It's me and my fiance. We've got two older gentlemen here, and we just start chatting it up. We're mm-hmm. drinking. Fast forward, guys. Like, yeah, I'm staying across the street. Um, I'm here visiting my best friend from high school. It's like, oh, cool. Who's your best friend from high school? Oh, the guy that created Jersey Mike's. He's he's coming in a little bit. Oh, there you go. It's, it's just, uh, I don't know if he's a billionaire. I know he's multi, multi he eight more, figure. He, he got more money than us. Yeah, so like <laughs> yeah. multi eight figure entrepreneur. And it's like just casually having a conversation there mm-hmm. at the bar. And I, I was funny. I've had this conversation with my mom where it's like college used to be so big because there was not that many ways to acquire a good network. Back in the day, mm-hmm. it was like, yo, go be in a fraternity, mm-hmm. meet Tim and Tom's dad yeah. who run Apple yeah. and Google, and that's how you meet cool people. Now, once you turn 21, you could just go sit at the bar in Miami at a nice restaurant and just talk to people. You are less than 20 people away from a million dollar opportunity. Yeah. And we Facts. we're blessed to live in that. Yeah. In no. that. In that yeah, no, area. No, no. no it, it's yes. Like you know, Miami is getting more expensive. But I don't really see it as as it being more expensive. I just see it as a more opportunity. More opportunity, bro. It's just vetting out the it's talent just, for it's us. Vetting out the talent, and guess what? If you dev, it, like, you're here for a reason. So yeah. definitely try to capitalize on that opportunity as best as possible. Hundred percent, man. This has been such a good conversation. I want to make sure that anybody listening that enjoyed this can go and follow you, connect with you. If anybody heard your services, 
and wants to go ahead and inquire about it, what's the best way for them to go and do that? Yeah, so uh, name is Bishop. Full name is Marvel Bishop. You can follow me on Instagram at Marvel Bishop. Uh, TikTok. Uh, I have uh, YouTube as well too, Marvel Bishop TV. And my concierge service, uh, we provide experiences for the 1%, bishopexecservices.com. Uh, DM me and anything you need, I'm here. Only the best. Amazing. And all that will be linked in the description below so you are able to just quickly go, click, connect with him. Man, again, I know I've said it a bunch, but thank <laughs> you so much for coming on the show. You're welcome, it has bro. been an absolute pleasure. I appreciate you, bro.